Nutrition labels were only required on food packages since 1990. Seems like they've been around a long right. time. The iconic black and white label didn't even make its debut until 1994 and was only updated for the first time in 2016. But do you really understand what you're looking at? Well, joining us right now to decode these labels is a primary care physician, Dr. Dina, right now. Thanks for being here. Okay, so what is the point of these labels? <laughs> So nutrition labels are really important because they educate you on the nutrition and health of the food that you're consuming. So really important to look at, especially if you have medical conditions like diabetes or heart disease, where you're trying to cut back on sugar and sodium. And a lot of people, of course, um, don't look beyond the calories and total fat. Is that a mistake and what should we be looking at? Absolutely, you should be really looking at everything on that nutrition label. So start with the calories, then yeah. the carbohydrates, sodium, especially if you yeah. have heart disease, oh, yeah. high mm -hmm. blood pressure, oh, okay. um, for example, and then the ingredients. It's important to look at those ingredients to make sure that there's no secret added sugars in the food that you're eating, yeah. as well as preservatives, artificial flavoring, coloring, which are things you generally want to try to avoid. So it's one thing to look at them, but also understand them. So break down for us. We have total fat, saturated fat, trans fat. What are we looking out for? So the total fat is basically the total amount of fat per serving. Yeah. And when we talk about the total fat, it's saturated fat and unsaturated fat. Saturated fat is the fat that we get concerned about because it's linked to heart disease and stroke and diabetes. So you want to limit your saturated fat to less than 20 grams per day. Mm. Then trans fats is another worse type of fat. It's been associated with a lot of medical issues. You want to eat as less amount of trans fat as possible. And the good thing is the FDA has banned most trans fats, so you can't really find it yeah. in much of the okay. food you're consuming. Less than 77 grams of fat a day? I, that's like one burger. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> For real. What are some foods that, that you would say that are high in saturated fat? So you hit on it. The uh, American yeah, okay. diet. We love our burgers yeah. and burritos and tacos Pizza. and cold cut sandwiches. Those are very high in saturated fat. Mm -hmm. Next are cookies and cakes, oh, things that have a lot of butter. <laughs> Definitely another source, so important to be yeah. monitoring your But pizza has content. tomato. That's okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> it has tomato, which is a vegetable, but then it also has a lot of cheese, which contains saturated fat as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, another thing we love are pasta and our rice. Should all carbs kind of be avoided when it comes to those things? So carbs in general are an important part of a balanced diet, mm -hmm. but it's important to think about your overall amount of carbs a day. So we typically recommend about 133 grams of carbs total in your day. And then we look at what's called added sugars. Added sugars are those hidden sugars that have been associated with a lot of medical issues, especially diabetes. So the goal is to really consume less than 50 grams total of added sugars a day. And just to put that into perspective, mm -hmm. that's like one can of regular soda. Oh, my so goodness. if you're drinking more than one can of regular soda, you're already above that intake. So definitely think about cutting back. You know, one thing I've noticed, a lot of people drink those pressed juices, and a lot of them have sugar in it. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. You, important, again, to be monitoring that nutritional intake. A lot of the restaurants, like especially chain restaurants, have the nutrition avail available on their website and on their menus. So take a look at that and make sure you're staying at goal. It's really important to try to cut back your risk of having it, me medical issues like diabetes and high blood pressure, all of which can be avoided with some of the foods that you're eating. Getting a sense that I should not be taking those tomato packets and squeezing them in my mouth. <laughs> and, yeah. Speaking of, let's go ahead and put our knowledge yes. to the test. We're going to walk on over to the table for a little mm -hmm. bit of a guessing game. We have some people's favorites over here, Honey Nut Cheerios and, of course, beloved popcorn. So let's go ahead and start okay. with, I guess it's the Honey Nut Cheerios. This is one, is that all you're going to eat? One cup? One? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want us to look out for on this? Yeah, so I want you guys to think about when you pour yourself a bowl of cereal, this is one cup of Honey Nut Cheerios, right? Something that we commonly it all eat. It was a lot bigger than that when I That's pour That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how many calories do you think might be in one cup of Honey Nut Cheerios? You're reading the box. What? You're supposed to, <laughs> well, you can't you're supposed reading, to you read can't, the label. You can't cheat. You can read the label. Yes. You take a look and see here. Um, okay. Here we have our nutrition label. It tells you our calorie amount, and it tells you the serving size, which is important one to cup, look at. but only one so cup. So one though. cup has... We only have an hour. For the calories? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this is Spanish. Wait, <laughs> wait what are we looking well, for? So, so 
some look Spanish. at the total calorie amount, which should yeah, be the first line. Says, That's right. So okay. this is 140 calories this guy, for one right cup. Here, for one That's little... right. But how many people actually only eat that much for breakfast, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. people, they'll have some extra milk in their bowl. They'll add on some yeah. more cereal. And there you're adding on more calories, which is adding on I'm to at the sugar as well. <laughs> so the next one we have is a little harder, yes. um, I, I would guess. How many calories in this bowl of popcorn, which is so like that's a small one, serving size for me. Yeah, so that's considered it. as a serving size of popcorn here. Just to let you know, this bag has three microwavable bags of popcorn. Okay. So can you look at that nutrition label and take a guess as to how much you think is well, in is this serving? Well, is a bag three and a half cups? One bag? So that's a great question. So that's where this gets very confusing <laughs> yeah. and why it's so important to read the label. So this box has three bags of microwavable uh -huh. popcorn, but it has nine portion sizes total in the yeah. container, oh. which means one bag has three servings right. of microwavable and each popcorn. Is calories. And each of those okay. third a third of the bag yeah. is 150 calories. So if you sit oh, there and, eat and the you're eating thing? a whole bag, that's a 450 calories. I feel looked at. Which you may not <laughs> have realized. So that's why pay attention to those labels. It's going to give you oh, a new story about what you do. just don't pay attention to, to the labels. I don't, you, don't want to, you don't want to take a test that you know you're going to fail. <laughs> this no, one is the hardest, but I think right. we great. Thank you, doctor. Thank All you right. so much, guys, for having me. And for more health tips, you can follow Dr. Dean on Instagram. The information should be right there on your screen.